Okay, this is the video of the installation of that diesel heater. And I'm gonna apologize in advance because this is gonna be kind of a patchwork of still shots and some videos. But I'm gonna try to uh, go along as I install it and give you an idea of what it takes. So the first thing I had to do was figure out, you know, where that was gonna fit in here. Because in my scheme of things, my, my overall plan, the wheel well, which is underneath that storage unit, that, that shelving unit, has been double insulated with Reflectex. And what I want to do is drill a hole right there, and then that box will serve as the ductwork. Then I'll come down in there somewhere and put the discharge for the heat. And then the diesel heater and I'm going to set it in here upside down because you don't want to mess up that fuel line. But it'll sit in here, you know, something in, in the like that. But it's going to have to be elevated so that the diesel lines will run. And you'll see from a picture I've got of the underneath, there is a lot of bracing under this small van. And just finding the holes that that would sit straight down on was just damn near impossible. So we're going to elevate it up, which gives me room to maneuver around the uh, intake and the exhaust. And that's basically where I'm at and what I'm going to be doing. So I'll take a few pictures and then a few videos, and hopefully this will be helpful. Okay, there's hole number one, which is the exhaust. Let's see if it fits down. underneath and take a picture and see how that looks. I elected to leave this next part of the video in just to show how tedious it can actually be. It's a double layer of metal on this hole so it's uh, quite a bit harder. The second piece that I'm trying to go through is actually a brace. Uh, where, but I mean, that's the best way to explain it. But it's a lot harder than that sheet metal. <laughs> No, going through the brace won't affect the integrity in a place that it'll be okay. Wow. And about 75% through. Success! Finally!
and leave that in there for as much insulation as possible. But you can see where I cut out a bigger hole around this because this is the exhaust vent. That's the metal pipe, and it's the one that'll get hot. So you don't want anything close to it that's combustible. So I've given it about, and I'll clean that up some more, but it's going to be about oh, an inch and a half or two inches all the way around. I'll probably take a little more out over here. So I'll have a good two inches of metal all the way around it. And uh, this is the intake, which is a plastic hose, so you don't have to worry about heat on it. So, there you have it. I changed camera angles. Maybe this will work better. Okay, I've cleaned it up pretty good right there. And the next step is going to be figuring out the exact angle that we're going to want this. And I'm thinking something about like uh, that right there maybe, which gives it, see, get my head out of the way, gives it plenty of intake here, and it'll allow it to shoot right into there. So got to build a box around it something about like this that's going to come all the way to there that will allow air to come in from around behind the door and from this area here which will be the cold air return and then it'll be sitting up about the box itself will, that the heater is contained in will probably be about that high because the heater has to sit up here about that high off those holes so that you have room to maneuver. Um, and then <laughs> I'll show you how I'm going to do the gas tank, fuel tank, diesel tank. It's actually going to just sit right on here in a container that when you're not going to be using the heater, that container is just moved. And the container will house the actual tank itself. Um, that way, if there's ever a leak or something, it'll be contained. Uh, and that doesn't have to be stored in the van. And if it's warm and you're not going to be using that heater, it doesn't have to go with you. So, that's my game plan as of right now. Well, there's the preliminary. In other words, the way I think I'm going to get it to go be a hole drilled in that right there which will allow the warm air to go out into the uh, box there which will be the ductwork of course and we'll have the uh, little vents somewhere up there so now what I have to do is figure out how we're going to build this box to make sure you got plenty of room so you don't want the heater bumping up against it you know rubbing against it so we're gonna have to make a little tweak and adjustment there. Back here for the intake, that is gonna work out real well. So once I get the plastic piece back on, this will have plenty of room to, to get air. Even if I have to drill, you know, some holes, some bent holes, or put a, uh, I may even just put a, uh, a grill on it, which will make it look really nice. But we'll figure all that up as the build goes. Because I'm wanting to mount the controller there, I've got to run a wire from there. And run that wire back along there, down and through there, and all the way to the bottom. And that being said, there's got to be power coming from the battery over on the rear driver's side to power this. And that's this 12 gauge wire. And the way it's gonna get its power is, I've run a 10 gauge wire from the battery across and to here. And then from that 10 gauge wire, I'll split it onto two breakers, thermal breakers. And one will uh, supply the power for the, the uh, heater and one will supply the power for the controls up there which are the light switches and that's the way I'm planning on doing it so now I've got to figure out how to get that plastic piece back up there so that's where I'm at right now well I had to jigsaw it a little bit over 
here along that edge. And I didn't do a real good job down there, but the rest of it looks pretty good. Okay, the next step, this is the plug-in that goes to the fuel pump. And I want to mount the fuel pump underneath because it's so loud. It clicks really loud. So I'm going to have to have a hole drill in somewhere there for the wire to the fuel pump and the uh, fuel line going to the fuel pump. So that's my next step. All right, well, I've been doing quite a bit of... Uh, calculating and figuring and deciding on what to do but this will be the exhaust hole this will be the intake hole and this line hole here will be where the gas lines will run in uh, the one going from the tank to the pump and from the pump back to the heater and then the control for the pump which is this little gadget right here will go through that hole and to the pump. So the reason I did all this, this has got to be, sorry, this has got to be bolted to the wall. But what this does is this allows me to put this at that angle, which then lets the heater sit exactly like I want. It's going to be right against here. And it's going to go through the hole here. I'm going to have to cut this out just a little bit right here so I have a better intake of air. But that's all just minor stuff. So um, onward. Okay, there's the box. It's a little tricky because it has to be able to be disassembled in case you need to gain access to the heater for any reason. So you can see it's got screws. And this end is left open. And the door will be right here and there's about a one inch gap right here that will allow air to suck in. And then I'm going to have the electrical. Let me move over here. I'm gonna put electrical right there. I'll show you that when I get done with it. But you undo these screws and this will lift off which then gains access to that. The side panel comes off as well, and you'll be able to stick your hand in and work on anything you may need to. Uh, and then for the assembling of it, uh, the initial, you know, tighten it down and everything, uh, that panel will have to be off so that you can uh, gain access to the clamps on the uh, exhaust and the intake and then of course putting on the, the fuel lines so it's coming along okay i'll show you the next little bit that's been accomplished this is the wiring for the controls up there and this will be the wires for the heater this will be a 20 amp breaker because it's a 20 amp fuse. This is a resettable uh, fusible link. And this will be a 15 amp, which will run the other up top. Now, let's let you look at this. See the hose that has the black? That will be the hose that will go from the fuel pump to the heater. This hose is going from the fuel tank, which will be sitting up here, through a filter, and to the fuel pump. Now let me show you what it looks like underneath. Okay, right there is where the hose comes through. This is just an old garden hose that I use to protect the fuel lines. And this is the uh, wiring for the fuel pump, and it just runs along the framework it comes through and is goes up there to the fuel pump this is the line coming from the fuel tank through the pump and then back 
to the heater. So, there you have that part of it. Now let's go see if we can get it set up. All right, let's see if you can see all of this. I've got two hose clamps on the intake, which is the plastic, and two hose clamps on the metal, which is the exhaust. And then, this kind of makes me nervous with the fuel line being right here next to this exhaust. So I didn't want it bouncing down the road and moving over. So I wire tied it right here. That keeps everything way away from the exhaust. All right, and this is the controls for the heater. I'm just gonna let that stay right there. So this is gonna go up to the fuel. All right, let's put it together. Okay, that basically leaves one component of the system, and that's the fuel tank. This is the tank that came with it. It's 10 liters. designed to mount on the wall and you know I thought about doing that let me show you I can get through here I thought about mounting that on the wall something you know like that but then I got to thinking that's gonna stay in there all the time it's gonna inevitably leak at some point when you're filling it or or changing out something and I just I didn't like it I didn't care for it so this is what I came up with that's just a regular battery box and in the battery box is a one and a half gallon fuel tank it's the same one that I was using temporarily the other day whenever I first tested the, um, the heater to see if it was even going to work. So what I've done is I enlarged this just a little bit so that the hose would go down in there. And I marked it off at 8 inches. And that is how far in that will go, which should just basically put it at the bottom of that tank with maybe just a little extra. And then, doing this one handed. Then you've got your line that has the filter, which I'm just going to stick right down in there. And then it's got this line with both a clamp to shut it off, the same stuff you use on an IV, and this is a quick connect. So, now one other thing I gotta show you. As fuel comes out, air has to come in. So what I thought about was using this right here. And what I did was I just put this small little stopper, which fits very loose, right there. And then I just barely close this, just enough to latch it. Now, small amounts of fuel is all that comes out of this, you know, this pump at a time. So the air consumption, it doesn't have to be a great deal. I left this in the van all night last night, and there was no smell whatsoever in the van. So that made me extremely happy. So I'm going to go set it back there and hook it up and show you the uh, process for that. This will also come out to go fill it. Or you can just carry this whole box. But the whole idea is don't get any diesel fuel inside the van. 
keep as limited amount of fumes as possible. When you're not using the heater, which around here is probably eight or nine months out of the year, you don't even need this in the van. And then that gives you an additional shelf. So that was my idea. And that's what we're gonna go with and see how it works. So basically you just have a shelf there for it to sit on. I'm probably gonna put a small lip right there so that that won't slide off. Uh, or I'll figure out something to secure it for, you know, turns and that type of thing. But basically the way it works is that line, which I showed you the other day, also has the tubing clamp on it because these don't have a spring in them. They're just open. So that's going to allow for, for diesel to come out of it if it's not clamped off. So my thought process was clamp it off, get you a paper towel or something, and then when you disconnect it, that little bit that's going to still be in that line can go into the paper towel and not into your van. And you've got enough line here between the two that you can do that outside of the van. So it should keep any moisture, you know, driblets from, from that. I'm just really trying to avoid the smell of diesel inside the van. That's really my only concern with this. So anyway, let's hook it up. And all that's left is the test run. Let's keep our fingers crossed and see what happens. All right, now that we've got the uh, heater installed, and the cabinetry built around it. Now we've got to figure out where we're gonna put our duct work. Well, we know where the duct work is, but where we gotta put our uh, vents. And what I'm thinking is something like that, where it'll turn. It's gotta be in below this, because this is the uh, hollow area around the wheel well that we've got the uh, uh, heater blowing into. So I'll probably put one here to start with and I may then come back and put a second one over here. We're gonna see how the first one on the end does. So, here we go. All right, there's the hole. Let's see if we can see up in there, give you an idea of what we've got actually. coming along right there if you if you had a good light you could probably see the end of the flexible duct coming off of the heater so it's coming all along the wheel well and should hit this and that'll be where most of the air will come so let's give it a try here in a few minutes and see what happens okay I've got to interject something here a little bit of an update uh, remember when we were talking about using the, the uh, uh, shelving unit as ductwork, that lower part there around the wheel well? Well, that just didn't quite pan out the way I wanted it to. These uh, heaters uh, run really warm. In fact, we can get uh, temperatures up to 240 degrees uh, coming through that ductwork, and that was just warmer than I wanted it to be on that wood. So I went ahead and used the... Uh, flexible ductwork that comes with it and installed that from the heater to the vent. I just wanted to give you an update on that. And now back to the install. And there's the uh, vent. Looks pretty good. It's kind of neat. You can turn any way you need it to. I think I'll probably just leave it like that. Okay. All right. That's, uh, that's my hands trying to warm them up. It's Christmas Day. So, Merry Christmas, everybody. But how appropriate. It's snowing. It's 14 degrees. The wind's howling. Uh, feel like temperature is zero to one. And we're going to test this uh, heater out for the first time. So, let's go ahead and prime it. And if you remember, I've got... Um, a lot of uh, 
fuel line because I wanted to be able to do the disconnect outside of the van. So it could take a little bit to prime it. But you press this OK button and you hold this down and then you press the up button. Listen closely and I think you'll be able to hear the pump. speed up I think but this is going to take a little bit to prime that that long distance of fuel line so I'm going to uh, get back to you when we're primed up okay we've done several cycles of the prime and let's see if it's got the fuel to it yet so this time we turn it on Let's see, let's turn this off first. Now we turn it on. Okay, if you noticed, the fan came on and I can hear it. And the glow plug, little red one, came on. Let's see what happens. Haven't heard the fuel pump yet. I'll get back to you when that comes on. Okay, the fuel pump just came on. Looks like it tried to light. See the little green? And there is quite a bit of air coming out of the vent. It's not warm yet though. And to be honest, I smell just a little bit of like fuel trying to start. wondering if that's because it wasn't primed all the way yet. Oh, flames coming up. You can hear the fan increasing. I've got warm air. getting warmer you can hear it it's it's getting it actually the smell that I was smelling was the uh, exhaust the wind is blowing it right back onto the uh, the van Probably because there was uh, probably some still some air in the in the line. But my carbon monoxide detector hasn't gone off, so it's not enough to worry about. And it is blowing a lot of warm air. Let me show you. All right can't show you really but 
Man, that is blowing out some really nice warm air. I don't think I'll need a secondary vent. I think that one will work. So now let's set this temperature. 23, 22 degrees. 22 degrees Celsius is right at, get my thumb out of the way, it's right at 72. So that's what we're going to put that set at. If you can see, fan's turning. It's working and it's still on full power. So we'll let it catch up here to the 72 and see what's happening. Feels good in here already. Okay, one last thing I wanted to show you before we call this a success is, you can see that is working really well. I had it open so I could look at the uh, fuel line. That's the way that sits. And now let's go outside and see how that exhaust looks. That's exactly what I was smelling a while ago. The wind was blowing it right onto the door here. But, you know, it wasn't overwhelming or anything. It was just a slight hint of it. And, uh, and this is doing well. You can hear the fuel pump down there kicking. So, I'm gonna call that a success. So that's the install on the Astro Stealth Camper Van. Thanks for uh, watching. If you like this kind of thing, give us a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe.